people in documentaries often say, oh yeah, um, I never thought anything could get like this, or I never thought this would happen, or that would happen, blah 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 blah. It's kind of a cliché at this point. But even though I'm a really wordy person, I don't have the words to describe how I feel about one million people seeing my work. Um, it's kind of insane. It, <laughs> it's kind of crazy. One million visits! Why are you killing me? I don't know. Oh my god! Yeah, 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 yeah. Somebody scream! A bit louder! Yeah! There's nothing on Roblox like a vision park! Woo! Oh, you can't do better than that! So, <laughs> I don't think Vision Park, um, I didn't think it would get, I mean, I, everyone always talks about the cliches, you know, everyone always says in a documentary or whatever about their, you know, when they're talking about stuff, um, oh, I didn't think it could get this big, or, oh, blah, 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 but, 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 it's, yeah, I didn't think it could get to the point it got, um, Vision Park was, initially created um, uh, just for my own enjoyment and just for the enjoyment of maybe my one or two friends that uh, played Roblox. No, not even that. My one friend that played Roblox with me um, when I first started. So it's a little bit odd that a million people have uh, seen my work, but you know what? I've got to get used to it for the rest of this documentary, so um, let's just go. Let's just go. I've always been obsessed with the 70s and the 80s. I've always collected stuff from that era or those eras, um, such as, you know, mobile phones, you probably see that in the back. And behind me, as we're talking, there's stereos and televisions and video game consoles and blah de blah de blah Point is, I've always been obsessed with those eras. I'm not really sure what drew me to that time period, uh, specifically. It's kind of an odd thing, you know, you don't just wake up one day and say, hey, this is my life now, you know, you kind of get drawn into it, or there's got to be something that actually started it. Um, but in my case, uh, it, there was, I can't remember what started it. I think the origin is probably in the Smash Martian adverts. Um, I was 12 years old, 11 years old, just going into secondary school. I can remember being in primary school, I was actually sitting in the class. Uh, we were all given something called Golden Time, which was where we'd be able to do whatever we wanted, uh, and oftentimes everyone would run to a cabinet that was in the back of the classroom, and we had these big, bulky, really big, bulky Toshiba laptops uh, that the school would provide for us, and uh, <laughs> it was really funny because everyone would dash really, really quickly, like, Go! There's the laptop! I dashed for a laptop, but I actually wanted to watch stuff. So um, while everyone else, though, was watching 
things like Tracy Beaker Returns, uh, M.I. High, and, you know, all those kind of CBBC shows and clips and stuff, and playing um, games on addictinggames.com, fog.com. I was busy going onto YouTube watching Smash Martian adverts and Kiora adverts. <laughs> <laughs> Or mash, get smash! Uh, yeah. Um, so secondary school was a little bit rough. Um, <laughs> you know, when you go in in year seven, uh, you first go into secondary or uh, high school. You first go into school and, you know, in my case, it was kind of, we had a couple of meet-up days and a couple, like a week to get settled and to kind of get into the new things because my primary school was in a really, really tiny place. Um, it was in a really tiny countryside town. Everybody knew each other. It was absolutely tiny, you know, really, 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 really small. And uh, then I went to secondary school, which was, you know, quite a kick. Um, <laughs> kick in the face for me, if you like. Um, I was uh, bullied relentlessly for, even, the, even though I did go in in my own clothes on Mufti Days, you know, I didn't stop. Um, I didn't let, you know, whatever they were going to do to me stop me from being who I was, because I thought, you know, that's just dumb. I don't want to wear what everybody else is wearing, and I don't want to sound like what everyone else sounds like. The majority of people in secondary school did not like me very much, purely because I was different. At this time, uh, there was a good escape, you see, because uh, while I didn't have any friends in secondary school, that didn't really bother me much, because, you know, I could, I could always come home. At the time, I had a black laptop. I had a black laptop that my dad used to use for work, but once he got an Apple Mac or something more modern, um, once he upgraded, he said, hey, do you want this? And I'm like, yes, I want this. Of course I want this. So yeah, he gave me his old computer, which was barely able to run Microsoft Word and um, Solitaire. But you know what? I installed Roblox on it and I was off. I think the year was somewhere around 2011, 2012. <laughs> I knew about Roblox before then. I obviously knew about modern gaming, but at the time, of course, I was more obsessed with video games from the 80s and the 70s. You know, I've got a huge, huge collection of uh, all this stuff uh, that I've accumulated over years and years of collecting. And um, I'm normally used to 8-bit graphics, and at the most, 16-bit. It's like, oh, oh my god! I mean, it was, um, it was kind of odd, because as soon as I got that computer, I was like, oh! Look at all this stuff! Look at all this stuff! So I went on Roblox, and I remember going on to uh, Crossroads for the first time. I think that was one of the first games I played. Yeah, it was really amazing, because I went on games like Disaster Hotel, Survive the Disasters, because I was so impressed by the fact that things could blow up and blocks were moving. I just loved how immersive it was, in a sense. All of a sudden, one day, uh, I decided, okay, I'm gonna make a new account. Um, because the thing is, I'd actually had three previous accounts on Roblox before. One of them was called Jumpy Crazy Noob. And the thing is, I had, you know, Jumpy Crazy Noob, and I was like, oh, okay, um, this is pretty cool. But the thing is, I forgot the password. Um, it was an extremely easy password as well, and I forgot it. Uh, but it doesn't matter. I didn't exactly know uh, how to get my password back, so I made a new one. Uh, this one was called uh, Quasar. I went onto this account and I started to realize, hey, you can make worlds. This is really cool. Um, and as I got used to how Roblox was, I discovered more and more that there wasn't enough for what I wanted on there. Because at the time, the majority of the front page games were Survive the Disasters, The Mad Murderer, um, Paintball, and stuff like that, and they were still good games. I'm not putting them down, but, um, they weren't... You know, they weren't immersive at all, so I needed an escape, basically. I wanted to create places, um, worlds. That was my main draw to Roblox, was you can create anything. And that was so cool, because, you know, you can build whatever you like. And I was trying, I was trying really hard to build worlds and build places that I wanted to go to, because I didn't like the place in which I was growing up in. I didn't like where I was. I wanted to make a world to escape. And, um, I think it kind of led to a series of different events that would lead me to building what you know now as Vision Park. My 
whole thing was, I'm gonna make this world, I'm going to just enjoy making it, and that's about it. It was actually really, really odd, because in the beginning, I was going to have an introduction with a narrator. It was just so I could enjoy it, and just kind of, you know, if other people came on and had fun, fine, great, I'm uh, glad you enjoyed it, but it wasn't kind of really meant for that. It was just kind of meant as a world for me to enjoy, um, to escape to, and just to have fun exploring within. I knew nothing about theme parks when I first began. I absolutely knew nothing. I didn't know what a KMG afterburner was. I'd never been on a roller coaster. I think I'd been on maybe a couple of dodging cars at that time, and that was it. Initially I made some basic attractions, and it was really, really badly built. Like, super badly built. Um, it looked so bad. It really was. The Alpha of Vision Park was just awful, because, I mean, it wasn't built for anyone. I didn't think anyone was going to visit it. I just thought, oh, I'm gonna make this world, and it's gonna be for me and my friends, and that's it. There's nothing more, you know, I wasn't gonna do anything else. And, you know, I released it, I put it out there, and I just kind of went, there you go, from day one. I'm gonna build a theme park, and I'm gonna get successful. You know, that was not the aim. The aim was not to get successful. I never thought that it could possibly get to the point it got to now. It got a couple of hundred, um, 200 something people visited it and uh, they started sending me messages and it was like, oh, okay, this is cool, um, a couple of hundred people like uh, what I've been doing, that's really cool, um, I'm glad you've enjoyed your stay. Uh, and they were like, oh, this is actually pretty cool and stuff. Um, and they said, oh, you should, you should, you know, update this game and you should do more and I'd love to see this, I'd love to see this in this theme park and I realised all of a sudden that maybe I should kind of put a bit more effort into it, so. I did. I pretty much stripped the thing down um, and actually worked on the Alpha Alpha, um, a proper release of what it would be. And I thought, I don't know, let's go somewhere and let's do a bit of research. So I went to a place called Breen Theme Park, you know, with the family. I said, hey, I'm building a thing on Roblox, could we go to a place for a bit of research? And they said, yeah, sure, we can go. And I walk in and all of a sudden <laughs> I see something that I'm pretty impressed by. It's this huge looking thing called Terra Castle. And I'm looking at this thing like, oh god, I hope it doesn't go too fast. Um, I hop aboard and by the end of the ride, I'm like, oh, that was pretty cool. <laughs> struck me it wasn't the animatronics, it wasn't the sound effects. The thing that I was inspired by was how completely and utterly just old it was. It felt old, the ride vehicles apparently were moved and bought from a different theme park that actually previously shut down called Frontierland in Morecambe. So, you know, everything was kind of recycled and everything was really beaten up, you know? You go on this thing and you're sitting in the car and you're looking at it and the doors have these huge scratches marks from where the cars have bashed them every single time they go in. The doors are held together with strings, you know, elastic strings that are behind them, and half of the animatronics have broken down, and all you can hear are the hissing uh, sound effects of the pistons going off and so on. I was really inspired by how kind of neglected it was, in a sense, and I realised extremely quickly that I needed to theme attractions, I needed to make something that was more impressive and put my own spin on the ghost train, while also paying homage and calling back to what had inspired me. 
So I know I warned you guys that this was gonna be scary. I had no clue those two rides weren't even that scary. This one, the asylum, might be very scary. Warning, this ride features flashing lights, jump scares, and loud noises. I need to talk to you. So I was testing this game to see if it was any good. I went on one ride for 10 seconds. Yes. It was the most terrifying thing I've ever seen in my yes, life. Yes, I'm so excited. Asylum, Roblox's scariest ghost train. Oh no. I went on this for 10 seconds. That's it? <laughs> <laughs> That's all I can handle. In all honesty, I don't think we would be... I, I don't think we'd be at a million at this point if it weren't for the Asylum. I'm not saying the Asylum is the reason as to why we got to a million. It certainly isn't. There's a hundred different things that you know, played into why we got to a million. It won't go anywhere, it won't do anything. You know, it's just a ghost train that I made so I could operate a ghost train. I think the asylum was really the first stepping stone to getting serious with Vision Park because it was the first properly themed attraction. Uh, and then we got to about 20,000 visitors and I thought, Okay, when did that happen? Roblox's scariest ghost train. If you put that on an advert, people are going to want to see what it is. And I knew that, but I didn't think that it would actually be the attraction that would pull us into, or pull me into being an actual Roblox developer. The Asylum isn't the reason, the main reason, but it definitely is an aspect, and it definitely did help Vision Park get into the mainstream, or de it definitely did help Vision Park to get more exposure. I think we had about 2,000, 3,000 people who had visited it, which was like a lot of people. I was like, whoa, 3,000 people want to look at my work? 3,000? Like, that's huge! And giving positive feedback as well, it was crazy. Um, nothing happened for a few weeks, and then all of a sudden, I go to bed, and then the next morning, I've got 20,000 visitors. And at that point, I realized, I, I just, I figured out that I had to... I had to push something. I had to find some kind of niche, some kind of market, some, some kind of thing that would, you know, get people's attention. While building it, I knew that no one had built pretty much anything like it before. Um, while building it, I knew that I was doing something special because I went to loads of theme park games and they just didn't have any horror rides at all. And when I went to these parks, I was like, why is there, you know, I mean, you know, a couple of Disneyland and Universal mock-ups had some horror themed related things and they were great. Um, but there was nothing that really screamed original, uh, and it was pretty quickly um, around the 20,000 mark that I realised this could probably be my thing, if you like. Highly themed original attractions that still have a connection to the real world that'll get both enthusiasts interested and just everyday players interested. So that's how Mr. Smiley came to be. I already don't like this. Is this a roller coaster? Yeah, it's a hypnotic. Doesn't roller coaster. this atmosphere just make you smile? It says Mr. Smiley is a hypnotic, fast-paced roller coaster. Please note that this attraction features high speeds, steep drops, and hypnotic imagery. This, this is insane! insane. <gasps> Whoa! Remember to smile for Mr. Oh Smiley. It's about to go really fast. Should it go up that <laughs> straight? <laughs> Here we go. Night rides! Night rides! Night rides! Here we go. Oh my god! Oh my Mr. Smiley was a pain to build. You would make a loop, and then all of a sudden, the flipping car would get stuck at a part of the loop, and then you'd have to retrack that part of the loop because it wasn't making it all the way round. Mr. Smiley was the first roller coaster at the park. Um, it took me approximately, uh... I want to. I want to say um, a month, maybe. It's it's a really difficult process. The way I build roller coasters is I take a block, and I make sure that that block can move other parts. I then take that part and I make a track out of it. I then take those pieces of track, group them together to make a model out of it, and then I just copy paste, copy paste, duplicate, duplicate. You go round the fourth loop. You come up. 
get a bit of air time, and then you start quickly descending um, into a little area that takes you into stage five. That tiny corner there that gives you a bit of air time on the side took ages and ages to perfect, and I don't know why I bothered. Every single time you see a corner um, on a roller coaster in Vision Park, every time you see a drop, any time you see anything that is curved in any way, that means I've had to take a piece, another piece, and I've had to go one, two, one, two, one, two, copy, paste, copy, paste. I take every single bit. I ended up wanting to keep it because doing it the other way didn't work too well and the track just didn't seem to fit, you know, there just wasn't enough space and there wasn't enough time and room to make the thing turn. So what I did instead was I kept on retracking that area over and over and over again. It's just this tiny section. It's about, it's about what, um, four pieces of track that I had to constantly maneuver and shift. One had to go a little bit to the left and just a tiny, tiny bit of rotation, and then the other one had to rotate just a little bit forward, and then all of a sudden, with this kind of amalgamation of random, weirdly placed track, the car actually made it round, and I was so happy. I was so happy. I was like, yes, yes, mm, yeah. Mm. You may say, oh, Quasar, you know, there's so many other things you can do. You know, there's plugins now, and there's different things for roller coasters. You can make them smoother, you can make them more realistic, but with Mr. Smiley, I didn't know about any of that. I, I'm sure it was around at the time, but I didn't know about any of that. So I placed every single block piece by piece, piece by piece, and it's just a pain. It was such a pain. I thought, oh, the asylum's really difficult to build because I'm having to do it piece by piece. Mr. Smiley was worse because I had loops and I was... Oh, God, it took so flipping long, and that's one of the reasons why... Um, the Mr. Smiley track is totally insane, is because it came at a price of my sanity. <laughs> it came at a price of my mental capacity to continue on with the ride. And... There you go. Um, it was pretty well received. <laughs> So after Mr. Smiley, um, we got pretty good. Uh, things were starting to kind of look up. So I created the fan club around the same time, and uh, that was really cool, and people were giving me feedback on things. And the general consensus at the time was bigger, 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 more, 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 bigger, bigger, bigger. So I made more. <laughs> So I decided to do bigger attractions, because everyone wanted more, the fan club was going crazy, it was like, more, 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 I want to see more. So I thought, okay, what am, what am I gonna do? I've done Mr. Smiley, what am I gonna do? I like abandoned buildings, so I made the Final Hour Hotel. Uh, it was actually uh, located behind the mall, and you would have to, I don't know if you remember this, but old fans will remember that the Final Hour used to be located behind the mall, and there's still quite a bit of footage on uh, YouTube uh, featuring um, the old Final Hour Hotel, and it really, oh, it really makes me, ugh. it's, ugh, it's not very nice. So what you would do was you would go through the mall, and you would go to the back, and there would be a little opening with a neon kind of pathway, and you'd go through, and all of a sudden you'd come out into this graveyard, because I really wanted to theme it really heavily. So people wanted more, they're like, more theming, more, more, more! So I was like, okay, I'll give it to you, fine, here you go! And within about two weeks, I made, the one week or two weeks, I made uh, the Final Hour Hotel. I released it, and uh, it, it got a really nice reception, um, although it broke down almost every other ride because I had no idea what I was doing. I was way out of my depth. So I made a little story and you could click on a button. I think that was actually the one of the first times my voice was used. It says, listen to backstory, let's listen. Here stands the abandoned remains of one of the world's most amazing getaways. The final hour hotel. I completely remade the final hour later on to have two drop shafts and more effects and more stuff. I was thinking, my god, how am I ever going to be able to top this? This is really, really good! Because uh, I was super proud of the final hour at the time. Um, I worked out how to make audio play on cue, uh, which is how the story started up when you first went through the hallway. I'm never going to be able to top this, never. I remember 
though about Enigma is I could never decide on a name for it. I didn't know what I wanted to name it until pretty much a couple of weeks before it was supposed to open. I was lying on a friend's couch and they were just doing something in the kitchen or something and I was all alone so I was lying there. It's about 1am. What should I name this attraction? What should I name it? And I kept on thinking and thinking. I came up with names like Into Darkness or Plunge Pitch Black or something like that. I wanted to incorporate um, the fact that you were going into a dark building, something that was absolutely pitch black. And it wasn't until I just went off trying to think of the name that it actually came to me. Um, I was writing song lyrics for my band at the time, and while I was writing song lyrics, I thought of uh, describing something mysterious. So I came up with the word Enigma to describe something in the song, and all of a sudden I thought, that's it. That's the name. Enigma was a pain. Enigma was an absolute pain. Uh, I keep on saying this about everything, but Mr. Smiley at least, all the track pieces lined up. God, Enigma on the other hand, Lord! I went through multiple stages of trying to build that thing. It was my passion project. Um, and I think that it shows uh, by how much I reference it, how much I like it, and how much I focus on it, and how much I've updated it. Initially, the track just went up the lift hill, down the drop, over the uh, over the airtime hill, and then up to that little area where you can see out of the alien's spaceship, and then it dropped down again in the middle of the darkness as it went around the laser and then exited. I quickly realised that wasn't fun enough. I you know, wanted to update it. So Enigma was an absolute pain to update, purely because the track never properly lined up. Somehow, some way, I kept on making the track uh, change in terms of width. I actually accidentally, without realising, had rotated the pieces. I'd rotated the track pieces to be just a little bit off, so they were kind of going in on each other just slightly, and all throughout building the ride I didn't know that's what was happening. By the time I'd actually finished the track, um, I sent the thing round and then it didn't even get there because I'd finished the track, I'd finished the whole thing. And I realised that on the very first drop before you even went into the building, before it even went to the main part of the track with all the airtime hills and all the corners and stuff, I realised, uh oh, the track's too small. <laughs> So, I we're, so I, we're what? Um, we're about five days away, we're about four or five days away from um, releasing the ride because I'd already teased it, I'd already got all the construction out and I'd already said, yeah, Enigma's coming soon, this is a really big, really well-themed, you know, coaster and you're gonna love it. And then I realised I'd screwed up the track! I was like, no! Oh god, it's too small! So I had to flipping take the whole thing out. That's the biggest thing. I think Enigma was probably one of the most... You know, the end product is great, but I never will forget how difficult it was to build Enigma because I ripped the entire track out. I had to build the entirety of the inside of Enigma all over again, and of course I just... <laughs> I remember about four or five weeks ago, um, a player called April Theme Park sent me the most insane thing. She sent me, uh, so she sent me on Twitter, she tweeted at me, um, hey, just finished my daily inspection, and it was a screenshot of the, the daily inspection checklist in Vision Park, where you, you know, can inspect all the rides and, you know, make sure they're all working properly, just for an added bit of realism. I didn't think that anyone would actually take it seriously, and bother to take a screenshot of it, and proceed to fill out every single thing in every single box with the applicable information. And I was like, wow, that's really, really cool. And then I see this link and I think, oh, okay, this is interesting. So I click on that. I thought it would take me to a version of the image that was more higher quality or something I could download. But no, it was a flipping 14 to 20 minute long audio track where April sits down and says, and explains every bit of every piece of every ride on the inspection checklist. You know, it's very humbling when someone sends you something to do with your work or something to do with your game and they've put extra effort into it and they've gone out of their way to make it 
you know, their own, and then to send you that, and it really does make you kind of feel that you've got the greatest fan base in the world. We've got this whole community of people where we have our own memes, our own cultures, our own references. It's that moment where you take a step back and you say, wow, we've got the greatest fan base in the world. Hey guys, Legendary Game Gaming here. Today I'm going to be showing you a picture that I drew of my favorite Roblox developer, Quasar49, the maker of Vision Park and Azabin. This took a long time to make. We've got such a strong community that uh, one staff member, one staff member, will take on an entire full server of players just to make sure that people enjoy their time at the park and to keep the thing running. And that's so amazing. You know, it's not just my park. It's never been my park. I nev I've never said it's my park. It's, you know, everyone's park. I can't accept many friend requests uh, because, you know, there's a limit on them. But I always say, if you're in the Vision Park fan club, or if you are in any way part of the Vision Park community, you're instantly my friend. If you go to the park and you help people out, and even though they may be rude sometimes, you know, if you're a staff member and you help those customers out, no matter what they say or do to you, and you just keep a smile on your face, service with a smile, that's the coolest thing, because we have created it together, you know, we ha it's not just me. I do the building and the development side of things, but Vision Park wouldn't be what it is without the community. You know, the positivity and the sense of family that we have, we've made it, you know, we have done it together.